So we actually have a very special guest with us this evening, um, Leslie Stevens, who is the CEO and president of Healthy Start Bar Orthotain. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Leslie before we get started. As I mentioned, she is the CEO of Healthy Start, but she's also a mother of three. Um, her goal and desire is to provide every advantage for children to allow them to live healthy and happy lives. Something you're going to learn tonight is that there is a silent epidemic affecting nine out of 10 children. And this epidemic actually manifests itself in a variety of symptoms that can easily be overlooked, misdiagnosed, and most unfortunately left untreated. It's absolutely critical that children are evaluated for sleep and breathing habits. Leslie is not only our fearless leader, she actually lectures and trains all over the world. Um, I don't think there's a question in reference to the subject of pediatric sleep, breathing, airway, and Healthy Start's connection that she cannot answer. And really, when you have the backing of a company like Healthy Start or Orthotain, you have 51 plus years, over 4 million cases, and tons of research to back you. Uh, Leslie's mission is to educate both parents and oral physicians to ensure children a lifetime of health, happiness, and success. So so I would actually like to take this time to hand the floor and the mic over to Leslie Stevens. Well, thank you, Susie. And um, I appreciate you being here so much. I know you're not feeling well, so um, kudos to you. But um, I would love to welcome everybody tonight and wish you all a very happy New Year's. Um, hopefully tonight, um, you'll be able to um, learn a little bit more about sleep disorder breathing, um, sleep-related breathing disorders. Um, they are used interchangeably. Um, it basically, we're gonna look at, especially children with breathing, sleeping, and airway issues, and look at these outward symptoms and be able to identify the underlying root causes. So um, sit back, enjoy, um, start thinking about your patients in your office, start thinking about maybe your own children or grandchildren. Um, you'll be so surprised with the information that we're going to present tonight that um, it relates to so many children that you see, even adults that you see on a day-to-day -day basis. And the mission is basically identifying, educating, providing parents with the necessary information, and most importantly, being able to um, identify and treat the underlying root causes, not only for today, but for a lifetime, for a child to make more permanent changes in their life. So anyways, without any further, let's get started and let's talk about what we see. So when we talk about the ADA and this silent epidemic that's occurring, um, the ADA has put in a really grand step into the addressing of especially pediatric sleep issues. Um, about a year and a half ago in October annual meeting, um, the ADA took a vote and basically passed a legislation that um, informs every dentist to be identifying looking for airway deficiencies in children, as well as looking for improper growth and development. And the education of this area is basically the responsibility of you as the provider, as the doctor. So um, Healthy Start basically has put together um, classes. We have digital classes that basically address this and really um, want to give you what this epidemic consists of, how we address it, how we look for the underlying root causes. And you as an oral physician expert is able to look at those areas in a child and be able to address them with a system that's extremely comprehensive, that takes you from A to Z, that really helps promote the growth and development in a child, as well as provide them with um, the ability to correct improper habits, create proper habits, as well as um, development of the dentition. And many times we say, frosting on the cake, we're gonna straighten their teeth at the same time. So, what we're talking about tonight actually affects nine out of 10 children and um, where they exhibit one or more of these outward symptoms. So when we look at the variety of outward symptoms, they're really kind of shocking. Um, mouth breathing, snoring, tooth grinding, swollen adenoids or tonsils, chronic allergies, eczema, asthma, ADD, ADHD, aggressive behavior, depression, irritability, anger, 
peer problems, few friends, bedwetting, difficulty in school, especially in the subjects of math, science, and spelling, delayed or stunted growth, restless sleep, nightmares, morning headaches, daytime drowsiness, frequently wakes up at night, sleep talking, walking. These are 27, well, some of the 27 that are the most prevalent that we see. But what's interesting and important to note are that children can display a variety of these different symptoms. But when we do see them, to understand and obviously make a parent aware that maybe these are all linked to a common underlying root cause that is contributing to the silent crisis we're seeing among um, America's children. Um, so when parents typically see these outward symptoms, they do address them, but unfortunately many times address them individually or they're not being identified properly. So many times we see children that might um, have been diagnosed with ADD and ADHD and they're put on medications, pharmaceutical, um, different drugs, um, sometimes different behaviors, especially um, poor behavior maybe has counseling therapy, um, uh, you'll see surgery for certain issues, sleep study tests, allergies. There's a variety of these, um, basically what we might call as band-aids for some of these symptoms, because we're not really looking at the underlying root cause. Um, what we want to do in the Healthy Start system is basically look at underlying um, characteristics, underlying deficiencies that are occurring in a child's development and be able to promote those and be able to give them um, every benefit possible. So instead of just looking at patching up a problem with a Band-Aid, we want to actually address. So it, these symptoms um, address symptoms only and not the root cause, which is sometimes what is happening with some of these um, um, diagnosis and treatment plans that parents are receiving for some of these outward symptoms. Um, unfortunately, many of them are short-term band-aids. Um, they often involve several drugs with side effects, and um, unfortunately, some of these band-aids are costly, painful, time-consuming, and ineffective. So by looking at what exactly the root cause of these symptoms are. So in the past 20 years, Reachers has linked um, these symptoms to a root causes. And these root causes include mouth breathing, a narrow palate, improper tongue placement, and jaw relationships. Um, so what do we do when we screen for sh sleep? What should be the first um, point of action for us? How are we going to do that? Well, just by observing, um, as a child walks into your office, you can easily detect different areas that a child is probably um, being affected. Um, if you look at the child on the right, or on the left, excuse me, look at the circles under her eyes. Look at her head as it lurched forward. Look at the boy on the right. He has circles under his eyes. Mouth, lips are parted. Mouth breather, absolutely. Um, he tends to look like he's heavy. He's not a heavy person. But when we look at the side profile, a lot of times if the um, lower third of the face is retrusive, it gives the appearance of much heavier. The neck blends, in, the chin blends into the neck, so we don't have that definition. So this girl on the left, take a look at her profile. Do we see deficiency? Absolutely. Look at the deficiency of that lower third, that mandible. Look at the way the lip rolls. The lips are parted. Is she a mouth breather? Absolutely. Look at the girl on the right, same situation. But look at how that lower chin blends into the neck. We call it a funnel look. And you can see how the lip rolls and there's a mouth breather. You can also see the circles on her, her eyes. So before a child even approaches the operatory or maybe you're um, the front desk person, you already can identify different areas that maybe a conversation should be started with that family. Um, many times, um, parents, you have to be careful how you point them out, but parents want the very best for their kids. And if you can point out deficiencies in um, their development and offer them uh, a way of addressing them and promoting those proper growth and development and really 
giving them such a benefit for their life. They'll be very appreciative. So another way we look at it, and this is such an important tool, it's the initial screening tool we use, and it basically is a sleep questionnaire. If you look, we have the initial section where a parent would fill this out. We ask them to basically rank the severity of the symptoms. So we say from zero to five, five being the most pronounced. And we have them go through here. If a child indicates mouth breathing, that's probably one of our more serious issues. But I would give this to a parent and let them take some time to fill this out. Don't rush them because you really want an accurate picture of what that child is experiencing um, during daytime, but most importantly, also during nighttime hours. Um, we are very excited. The ADA um, at the symposium this past summer um, had a round table where they are trying to identify the first course of action. And they're looking at it from the standpoint of a pediatrician, as an ENT, as a dentist, as an orthodontist. And the screening tool that they have decided to investigate is the Healthy Start screening tool. So it is very effective. Um, we've used it considerably on so many children. And I am will be getting to a research project that was done on over 500 children, identifying and observing um, these different um, symptoms and the, um, uh, the frequency of the symptoms and what it basically means for you and your practice. Um, this is that research project I was speaking of. It basically addressed over 500 children, and it looked at children from ages 2 to 16. So the results of the study basically said, mouth breathing and snoring are commonly associated with more sleep disorder breathing symptoms than any other symptom study. We also know 9 out of 10 children had one or more outward symptoms of sleep and sleep disorder breathing. 60% of the sample had four or more symptoms. One out of five children experienced bedwetting. Um, this is an interesting one. I had no idea that um, bedwetting at a later age was so prevalent. It's actually 18.7% of the children at a later age will bedwet. So what does that mean? That means a classroom of 20 kids. You can expect four of those kids to be bedwetters at a later age. Um, that, that's significant. And it's obviously not something we really talk about. On the sleep questionnaire, we do ask about it. Um, I would say it's probably a 50-50 chance at the onset that a parent's gonna answer that accurately. Um, sometimes during a discussion, we'll ask a parent, you know, so many times we see kids that have a lot of these outward symptoms also have bedwetting issues. And you will immediately know by the look the parent and the child give each other if that's a situation that maybe um, should be explored a little bit more fully and explain why we're asking that question. Um, other results is between, and this is critical, between ages four and 12, 92.6% of symptoms do not self-correct, what 30% worsen with age. How many times have we heard the comment, oh, I think they'll grow out of it? Well, in this scenario, it would be rare that they would grow out of it. So if you see an outward symptom, you need to address it. You know it's gonna be around for a very long time. And unfortunately, 30% will worsen with age. So as we look, you can see some of the percentages. Um, mouth breathing obviously is the most prevalent. Um, this study showed 43%. I know doctors repeatedly tell me it happens much more frequently. It might, but according to this study, you know it is probably our most significant and most prevalent outward symptom. And when we talk about mouth breathing, people will ask, well, why is that so important? Um, I don't understand why we are um, addressing this or what ramifications. Well, let me just tell you, one of the very first ones is with mouth breathing, just by opening our mouth by a half an inch, we basically can reduce our airway by six millimeters. Well, a seven-year-old's airway is about seven millimeters. So that means that child is trying to breathe through an airway of one millimeter. Are they getting enough oxygen? No. What requires oxygen? REM sleep. If they're not getting REM sleep, they're not getting the reparative sleep they need. Will it affect 
the neurological behavior of a child? Absolutely. Will it affect their endocrine and immune system? Absolutely. Hormonal? Absolutely. The body will be out of balance. So that's where we see these outward symptoms um, appearing. And this is, you know, think of it as yourself as a detective. You are fortunate to have these outward symptoms that we can um, identify and then evaluate further what the underlying root causes are. So it's really important. Um, another thing with mouth breathing, you're obviously bringing foreign air in without having it filtered, um, which we realize the nose is what that um, uh, feature of our body is designed for. The nose is so important and we'll get through the different aspects of it. But realize that by breathing through your mouth, you're not getting the proper exchange of CO2 and oxygen as well. So there are so many factors that come into this mouth breathing that basically handicap a child um, to be able to function properly and to really have the quality of life that they need. So when we see a child that mouth breathes, we already know if they just mouth breathe at night, they'll have seven other outward symptoms. If they mouth breathe during the day and night, on average, they'll have eight other outward symptoms. And here are some of them that are usually associated with the mouth breathing. So you can see snoring, difficulty listening, and often interrupts, talks while sleeping, um, allergies, fidgets with their hands, restless sleep, teeth grinding, feel sleepy or irritable during the day. So um, what is the implications of this study? The findings show that sleep disorder breathing is much more common and affects children even as young as two years of age. Begin treatment as early as possible to ensure permanent changes. Identify outward symptoms displayed in 90% of the children that enter your practice can significantly reduce this epidemic and enable you to successfully treat the overall health of your patients. So let's talk a little bit about airway and what that means. So when we talked about the mouth breathing and reducing an airway down to one millimeter, well, what's one millimeter? How do we explain that to a parent? How do we explain it to a child? Well, take a look at what a coffee stirrer looks like and a garden hose, a great comparison. So um, another way we can look at it is when we look at a child, a seven-year-old or really any young child, if you look at the pinky of their finger, that top portion indicates the size of their airway. So that's another way. I mean, you realize how little that is and any compromise of that airway is really going to dramatically reduce the amount of oxygen that's able to be um, supplied to the body. So use those um, visuals. Sometimes we have a coffee stirrer and a big um, milkshake straw on the operatory table so that a patient can see and a parent can see the differences. Um, parents frequently ask, why is this happening? Why do we see so many more children having all these outward symptoms? Well, it, it started, the increase began with industrialization. We see more and more use of bottles, less um, breastfeeding, um, more pacifiers, softer diet, these are all things that affect the development of the oral cavity. Um, when we had a hard diet, we were able to use um, that chewing motion to expand the arches, to create and develop the oral cavity to the extent that it needed to, to provide um, a healthy environment. When we use a pacifier or a bottle, we're causing suction in the mouth and the arches are collapsing. We're also depressing the tongue and if the tongue is not up in the palate of the mouth, we're not gonna be nasal breathing, we're gonna be mouth breathing. Um, I will say something kind of interesting. So when you talk to a parent, they'll say, well, where is my tongue supposed to be? Well, I always say, say the letter N, where that sound ends should be where the tongue is at rest. Most parents will be, uh-oh, we have another problem because my tongue isn't resting where it needs to be either. So these are some of the things that you should start explaining to a parent. Another one is to explain when we look at a child in the primary dentition, a lot of times the parent says, well, their arches don't look near. Look how pretty their teeth look. They're perfectly in line. Well, we all know if we see baby teeth that are right lined up with no spaces in between, I already can tell you you're going to have at least six millimeters of crowding. 
So these are important areas to explain to a parent um, that they'll start to understand the dramatic changes and basically the side effects that have occurred because of these introductions of bottles, pacifiers, soft diet, that's basically going to impact the growth and development of that child. So when you have a patient come in and you look at just the way the position of the oral cavity is, if you see an open bite like this, right away you should understand probably a pacifier or prolonged nipple bottle, um, maybe a finger sucking, most likely a tongue thrust, and I would guess a mouth breather. So these are the things start thinking of when you take a look. Um, give a parent an idea of what we're talking about when we talk about the airway. Explain where the nasal cavity is and where the hard palate and the soft palate begin and end, where the tongue is placed, and basically the airway, and what we're looking for and how we're trying to maximize that airway. We spoke just briefly about the nose and the important functions that the nose plays. And basically, it serves as an air passageway. It warm and moistens inhaled air. Its membrane traps dust, pollen, bacteria, and other foreign matter. It contains receptors that sort out odors, and it helps with the quality and the pronunciation of the voice. So how many times have we seen a child conked out in the car seat with the mouth hanging open? Is that a mouth breather? Absolutely. So when we look at this, we're looking at the improper air exchange. And as we talked about in the last study, we know this occurs in about 43% of the population. And I will say at least 43% of the population. Um, this is a great video. I, I want you to listen to this and kind of understand what we're talking about and then realize what we can do to help these kids um, be able to breathe and get the reparative sleep they need. So this is Eli, so take a listen. Maybe we won't be able to listen to this tonight. Oh, this is too bad. Well, um, I am sorry that this is not working um, right now, but Eli um, basically, as you can see, is a mouth breather. Well, when he's sleeping, he literally stops breathing for um, uh, about 30 seconds, 60 seconds, a minute. It is unbelievable. And when he tries to grasp air, he'll turn his head to the side and gulp that air. And this happens continuously all through um, just a five minute period, three minute period. But when we take that lower chin and bring it forward, we basically open up the airway, eliminate the mouth breathing and encourage the nasal breathing. And all of a sudden, Eli is quiet. There's no interruption. There's no stoppage of breath. He's calm, he's restful. And um, again, I'm sorry, um, maybe after this, if you can give us your emails, I will make sure that you get a copy of this because it really is an interesting. And so many parents, when they hear it, it um, is very effectual to understand. So let's talk about airway and what a restricted airway is and what a normal airway is. So the child on the left, you'll see how little and restricted that airway is. Um, we find that 21% of the population will have a restricted airway. And please realize that these are cephalometric metrics. If you take a CEPH or you do a CBCT scan, you're taking it in a vertical position. And as the child is in a vertical position, obviously it's not as detrimental as when they are sleeping in a horizontal and the mouth has more of an opportunity to open up. So when I say 21% of the children will have a skeletal um, restricted airway, meaning that it occurs in an upright and vertical position. Here is what a normal airway would look like where it is obviously much more um, wide. It has the diameter, so obviously um, the ability to take in um, more oxygen and the proper combination of 
uh, oxygen and CO2. Um, when we look at the effects of mouth breathing, here we have a child on the left that has a normal airway. Great, looks normal. However, look what happens when they mouth breathe. They restrict that airway. So again, just by opening the mouth by a half an inch, you can restrict the airway by six millimeters. Here's another good visual to understand the size of an airway. So here's a seven-year-old. This is the ideal airway. Remember I said little pinky. Um, you can use this drawing. You can use a coffee or a um, milkshake straw. These are all good examples. And this has 100% airflow. Now, if we have the mouth breathing situation where we're reducing that airway down to a millimeter, look at the size of a millimeter. That's, that's basically non-existent. And that only gives the child 11% of airflow. So these are great visuals to be able to provide to the parents. Um, here's a very interesting case. Um, and um, doctors, um, some doctors have these CBCT scanners. Um, they provide a great amount of information. And let me explain what it is and why um, we use it if we have the ability to um, utilize this machinery. So typically in the world of airways, um, there is kind of a normal measurement that um, we will look at a patient and be able to say, airway is normal, it's restricted, or um, maybe um, is overly developed. Um, very rare. Um, so when we look at a child, we will start at the age of five. So how we find this measurement is we say the age of the patient times 10. So if a child is nine years old, we would say nine times 10, we would anticipate a 90 square millimeter airway. This patient um, on the screen is basically a nine-year-old and he had a measurement of 53.6 square millimeters. So realizing he should be at a 90 square millimeters, we know he is deficient in his airway. So this patient was actually put into a habit corrector and one month later, we were able to reevaluate what this child was experiencing. You'll notice that the habit corrector is in the mouth. So we have expanded the airway and we get a measurement with the appliance in the mouth of 337 square millimeters. Now that's six times what we would anticipate. But even more importantly, as airway develops, we max out at age 17. And a normal adult airway at the maximum point would be between 150 and 170 square millimeters. At age 21, we start to deteriorate our airway. So this particular child not only increased their airway six times what initially was seen one month prior, but they doubled what we would anticipate to see in an adult. This is astronomical. When we look at our adult patients who have sleep issues, their airway is compromised. So the question has always been, did they ever reach their potential or is the potential enough to last them through their lifetime? I don't know the answer. We are doing research studies right now to anticipate and look at this further. And um, hopefully we'll have further answers as well as um, long-term studies that would determine um, the effect and the ability to maintain this airway. So all very interesting. Here's a little schematic of what we just talked about. Um, and you can see what a normal airway is and um, what this child experienced. So let's kind of go over what we see. When we look at a child, we see mouth breathing or snoring, a lot of these outward symptoms. So if we see mouth breathing and snoring, we kind of realize already that they have extended bottle feeding or pacifier use. Um, they have poor tongue position and probably an abnormal swallow. Um, sugar, um, foods can have effect on this as well, as well as poor oral habits. So thumb or finger sucking, um, tongue thrust. So what, with the condition of mouth breathing or snoring, what ends up happening is basically we create a compromised airway. And with a compromised airway, we see a reduced airway, which restricts the airflow. We reduce the oxygen, increasing CO2. 
we affect the brain function, immune and endocrine systems, um, swollen adenoids and tonsils, um, long tongue position, tongue thrust, um, underdeveloped dental arches such as overbite, overjet, and crossbites. And with a compromised airway, we basically exhibit the outward symptoms we see of sleep disorder breathing. And these outward symptoms, again, are restless sleep, ADD, ADHD, bedwetting, chronic allergies, nightmares, daytime drowsiness, et cetera, the list that we talk. So you can kind of see that it, we have this circle occurring and we need to basically interrupt that in order to um, provide the ability for a child to um, breathe properly, um, develop an airway, um, be able to basically develop their oral cavity and the habits that's necessary to um, promote a lifetime of healthy living. So we talked about this lack of oxygen that occurs and what it can impact. So interesting, there was a study done um, by Drummond and Stricker. And the first three images are um, after a normal night's sleep, an MRI was done. And you can see the brain activity that occurs. Well, the lower three are basically without one night's sleep. It is very difficult to even see any brain activity. So understanding how difficult it is for a child, if they're not getting the proper sleep, if they're not getting the REM sleep that they need, and how it will impact the brain function that um, should be occurring for these kids, and obviously um, for the development um, of their cognitive abilities. So let's talk about Healthy Start. What is it and how, what do we do? So we are 51 years plus um, and have treated 4 million children worldwide. Um, we start with a series of appliances that basically start as young as age two. Actually our youngest patients, we have five of them that are 13 months. So um, if a child is mature enough, we can begin this treatment as early as 13 months. So the appliance is, um, the series is basically um, a series of appliances that go along with the growth and development of the child and addresses not only the habits, creates new habits, but also allows the development of the oral cavity by guiding the incoming teeth, straightening the existing teeth, as well as promoting growth and development of the jaws and the lower third of the face. So if you have a child that comes in, say at age five, um, that child will begin with what we call a habit corrector. And the habit corrector basically will address the different habits that are occurring and promote the proper habits. Um, there is myofunctional therapy built into each of these habit correctors. So it's activated by a swallow. So every time the child swallows, you're reinforcing that myofunctional therapy. Um, all during the night. So we breathe, um, we swallow one time a minute at night, we swallow two times a minute during the day. So at night, we basically repeat that habit almost 500 times. So you can see how often we're repeating this and how ingrained it becomes as a natural behavior. Um, the, the second appliance in this series will also be a guiding. It will help develop the jaws, it will promote the growth and development it will correct any overbite, any overjet, open bite, gummy smile, class three, cross bites, all with passive nighttime wear. So it's very interesting. And as the child develops, obviously we'll continue into an appliance for the um, mixed dentition. Now, if a child comes in at age 10, well, obviously we'll start always, like I said, with the habit corrector, same principles available, and then they'll move into what we call the mixed dentition appliance or the G series. And it will behave the same way, except many times with older children, because there are more permanent teeth in the mouth, we might have them wear it one to two hours during the day and at night. We work on adults and teens as well. Obviously, there's no more growth, so we have to be a little bit more careful what we're address how much we can address in those um, particular age patients. So Healthy Start is addressing the root causes that we see associated with sleep disorder breathing. So these root causes that Healthy Start are going to address are expanding the dental arches, establishing nasal breathing, training the tongue, eliminating the bad habits, 
advancing the mandible to correct overjet, encouraging the proper facial and body growth, since lack of REM sleep impairs function of adrenal glands to secrete growth hormones, and we correct more, most orthodontic problems. And depending on the age of the patient, it can be simply with nighttime wear. If it's an older patient, it might be one to two hours of daytime wear and night. So it, it's a pretty easy type of treatment, and um, it, 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 it's amazing how much we can do just with the proper guidance and um, you know, clutching them, especially during their growth. So let's talk about the built-in habit corrector, or myofunctional therapy. What is that and how does it operate? So here's an example of a habit corrector. And if you can see, we have different features on it. And each feature represents a different area that we're going to address. So we have what we call palatal tabs. And they're basically vertical um, walls that are on the appliance and they have bumps on the either side. And the tongue is actually going to be pressed against them to start expanding the arches. At the same time, we have a ramp or a lingual shelf that's on an angle. So as the child swallows, the tongue is lifted. Remember that spot I explained about the end where that sound ends? Positioned up in the upper palate of the mouth in order to create the proper swallow, but also the proper tongue position. Because if the tongue is in the palate of the mouth, guess what? We can only nasal breathe. We also have what we call these two, we call them prongs, you can call them whatever you want, but it prevents the tongue thrust. So if a patient hits these prongs, it immediately allows the tongue to retract itself. So we're creating the proper swallow for them. At the same time, um, we have pads that we can add to the habit corrector so that it will help close an open bite more quickly. If there are no pads, it's used for a regular um, overbite, overjet condition. Um, we also have two um, um, tabs on the lower portion that hold so it doesn't allow the lower chin to drift back. We also have a pull tab. The pull tab basically can serve as three different features. One, it can be hooked to the night clothes at night. So if a child mouth breathes, um, the appliance can fall out. We already understand that. And sometimes we explain to a child that it is gonna take you a little time to make it all the way through the night with the appliance in the mouth. We say it's not a sprint. Everybody gets to the finish line. It's just that part of your body that adapts to this and how ingrained these habits are that's gonna determine the length it takes in order to keep that appliance in all night. The other thing we can do with that tab is if they put it in their mouth, you can pull on that tab. We tend to see children that are mouth breathers have um, weak lip strength. They also have shortness of the lip. So by doing this, we can actually help them hold that appliance in their mouth and strengthen those lips. We can also do another interesting thing is take the appliance out of the mouth and see how well they seal their lips. So we can take that pull tab and put it in between their lips and they have to hold it so the appliance does not fall. All these are different areas that they can use to increase their lip strength, especially when we realize they're a mouth breather or if they're having difficulty keeping that appliance in at night. Um, we also want to look at the swallow. A swallow will tell us a lot of things and that's basically how that tongue is placed in the mouth. So typically put a glass of water on um, the operatory table. Tell the child, you know what, you've had a rough day. Why don't you take a sip of water? Um, I wouldn't tell them, I wanna look at your swallow, so I want you to see how you actually um, swallow when you're drinking. Um, just let them be natural. So when they take a glass, sip of water, all you wanna see is this moving. You don't wanna see any of the facial muscles um, moving with a swallow. So sometimes you'll see a kid already you know they have an improper swallow. So this appliance will also address that. So it will position the tongue so it creates the proper swallow for them. So when they come in, maybe if they come in, you know, the next month or the one after, keep having them take a sip of water and keep monitoring how that swallow is improving. You'll see dramatic changes. I mean, within the first month, you won't, it, it, it's like night and day. Again, we talked a little bit about how much we swallow how many times that appliance is working for you. So again, during the day, you swallow two times a minute, at night, one time a minute. 
So you can kind of understand in your head how many repetitions that really means for that child. Um, we have an interesting research study that's coming out. And basically it goes through um, 221 um, patients that have used the Haver corrector and what your anticipation should be in the first six months of treatment. So for instance, um, children that have headaches. In the sample of 220 children, we found 40 or 18% had headaches in the morning. And out of those, 98% had improvement within the six months. Um, percentage of cases with 100% was 85%. That's pretty significant. So you can go down and look at the different symptoms and the percentages that occurred. So let's talk about ADD and ADHD. Um, obviously we all talk about it. We realize it's an epidemic. Um, you hear more and more kids that have been diagnosed with ADD and ADHD. And um, obviously we see a lot of kids that are on medications. Um, you know, there's much discussion on um, what parents are going to do to help their kids, um, if medication is a cure or is it a Band-Aid. Um, interesting statistics are that currently, the most recent research showed that 85% of the children that had ADD and ADHD had sleep issues. What's interesting is the criteria that we use to evaluate a child um, with ADD, ADHD is the same criteria we use to evaluate for sleep issues. Could they be misdiagnosed? Absolutely. So usually, my, my comment is, maybe we should screen for sleep first, prior to going down the other. Let's see how much we can improve in that child's, whether it's behavior, um, ability to focus. Um, let's just see what changes we can make and um, go through that and then, you know, we can address what um, that child looks like after we finish treatment. Um, there is um, probably one of the largest studies ever done on ADD and ADHD was by a, a woman named Karen Bonick. And she basically studied over 13,000 patients. And she found that sleep disorder breathing increases risk of ADD and ADHD by at least 50%. ADD and ADHD patients have little or no REM sleep, but they have delta sleep. Patients without ADD and ADHD have primarily REM sleep and delta sleep. And in the study of the 501 children, we found that 25.2% of the cases basically identified their children as having ADD and ADHD. Um, what, are, what are some of the long-term effects of um, ADD and ADHD, well, 50% are held back one grade. 30% are held back two grades. My comment is, if it's sleep related, I don't care if you held them back 10 grades, that child is still gonna struggle. So it's really important for us to, again, identify the underlying root causes and identify deficiencies that might be occurring in that child. Um, before we go down another route. I think it's really critical to have that conversation and make parents aware of maybe that um, area that should be addressed. Um, there was another very interesting study relating and identifying that children who have sleep disorder breathing or sleep issues, it can actually reduce the IQ of that child by 10 to 20 points. I mean, in my world, and most parents, it would be like, wow, that could make the difference of going to college or not going to college. Well, the study went even a step further to identify exactly what does an IQ point represent, and they put a monetary number on it. Do you realize that each IQ point represents $170,000 during the lifetime of a child? So these are really, I mean, we're all here. Um, if we're not a parent, we obviously have nieces, nephews, we have children in our lives. We realize we want to give them every benefit to succeed. Um, one doctor always said, you never know, maybe that one patient that I helped is the one that's going to find the cure for cancer. I mean, that's what we should look at. We, I, I think going into dentistry, 
um, I asked doctors all the time, why did you do this? And they said, because I really wanted to make a difference, to change a person's life, to make them healthier. Well, this is something that is going to change a child's life in such a degree that we probably can't even imagine. And um, there are times when I'll be walking down the street and someone that I have basically um, worked with will run up and just basically hug me. I, how many times does someone hug you and says, great root canal, that was awesome. Or a parent that comes up to you and says, you have no idea how much you have changed the life of my child, but how you've changed the life of our family. As we all know, one child struggling is a family struggling. So this has so many ramifications. Um, you know, we, we hear doctors say, when I bring one parent or one patient in to be treated with Healthy Start, I end up treating their whole family. And whether it's in dentistry or in some other sleep issue, um, the family has confidence in you. You have made a difference. You have gone, you have found out about the technology out there and you've been able to help their children. So it's really a dynamic area. So let's talk about how we promote growth and development. Um, we talked about how important it is to get these children when they're young. And the reason being is because of the cranial facial growth. We see that the growth you can see here a tremendous amount even happens prior to um, age, two years of age. 68% of the male um, cranial facial growth has already completed. 73% in the female has already um, been completed. So by age 12, it's almost like game over. The cranial facial growth has almost completed. So the ability to promote the growth and development is minimal. And that's why when we look at adults, yes, we can adult, treat adults, we can address symptoms in the adults, but our parameters are different. We don't have that growth and development element that we have in children. So I, I, I am always happy to treat any aged child or a patient or adult. Our oldest patient is 84 years old. But I, I, I think maybe I have a sense of disappointment because I wish I had seen you when you were a child so that we could look at you at a very young age. So this is something to just keep in mind um, when a parent comes in. And again, remember, if you identify one of these outward symptoms, we know 92.6% of the time, it's not going to self-correct. So if you see it, take advantage of all the growth and development that's out there to be able to address it and make more permanent changes and make more dramatic differences in the growth and development of that child. So let's take a look and see what we're doing with the Healthy Start. So remember we talked about that forward growth. We're always looking at the lower third of the face. Let's see if we're, how deficient we are and what we can do to promote it. So you can see two before and after, and you can see how much forward growth occurs. Actually, we did um, one of the largest orthodontic studies ever done it was done in the country of Finland in different towns. And we found that with the Healthy Start appliances, we actually promote 54% more growth in the mandible than they do in a control sample. That's huge. That, that, that's the difference between a healthy life versus a compromised airway that can plague a child for the rest of their life. Um, we have um, different appliances that can basically um, promote both the upper, the maxilla and the mandible in a forward direction. So we call it the max A. And what's interesting about the max A is basically there's no wall in the front. There are three taps in the back that the tongue is going to be actually pushing in order to drive that upper arch in a forward direction. And then the max A appliance is going to allow that lower jaw to follow in that same um, direction. And you can see here the initial you can see one month progress and you can see currently. This is so important to be able to do that and it's done in such an easy way. With this appliance that we do ask them to wear one to two hours a day where they're pushing because we need that active movement. And then typically they'll wear it at night as well. Um, sometimes they'll use the habit corrector also at night depending on which way. Class three, another very important. Um, obviously with the lower, um, Sometimes they call it an anterior crossbite, but basically that lower um, 
dentition is basically blocking out the growth of the upper arch. So we have to be able to make that jump in order to allow growth to proceed. So the class three is designed very similarly to what um, the max A was with no front wall and the three taps. But there is going to be a portion here that's gonna hold the lower jaw so we can make that jump. And then we'll move into the next appliance, which is a habit corrector, and we allow the growth to continue. And it is like we restart them. So as soon as they make the jump, we see more normal growth and development. Now, I'm typically talking about a pseudo class three. Um, when we go into the digital class, we'll talk about the differences between pseudo and skeletal, and we'll go through all those differences. And as you know, every case that you treat um, you'll be able to submit that to the Healthy Start. And we have doctors, orthodontists, dentists, pediatric dentists on staff that basically will review these cases and they'll put together a suggested treatment plan for you. So you're never alone. Um, so often you have a new technique you wanna start and you're thinking, you know, how am I gonna do this? I don't, uh, this is new to me, it's challenging. I, I feel that I'm just not equipped will realize you have that consultant with you at all times. We are there for you. Um, we will follow that case along with you. We have a portal where we are identifying and watching the progress of that child. Um, we have an app that we use so that 30 days you don't see your patient, you're able to monitor their wear as well as their progress. We have them take photos every Friday. Um, it's really a great way to um, be able to monitor that. Treatment planning. Um, this is what we talked about. These are what we'll be looking at in the cases so that we put together a very comprehensive treatment plan for them. So, so let's do the fun stuff now. Let's take a look and see where we are um, when we look at some of these cases that have gone through the Healthy Start treatment. So here's a particular child and this is what their sleep questionnaire looked like. You can see a lot of fours, threes, um, some fives, um, bedwetting was the one. Um, I believe this is the mom that basically said, if you can stop my child's bedwetting, I will pay you $20,000. She goes, I, apparently um, the child's seven, but she, I think she had five or six kids. She goes, I, I'm, I'm at my end's wit. I just don't know what to do. My child every single night and it was soaked all the way through. She said it's just been a, a very a, a difficult time for her. Um, we also had them fill out the speech questionnaire and did have nasal speech. Um, also um, had some speech issues that um, could be addressed. Um, he also said very delayed speech. So here's the child. You can see their initial, um, this was done in March, 2015. Um, you can see the very deep significant overbite that they have. Um, and you can see the circles under the child's eye. Look at the arch on the lower, it's a more of a square arch rather than a more rounded arch that we would like to see. Here he is, um, um, I think this is maybe a year later, you can see the development, look at the overbite correction, look at the arch, look at the lower arch, how nice that is. Look at the way he looks, the circles have been removed, look at the development, it, even the profile looks much nicer on him. Um, here he is in 2018. You can see how the case is maintaining. Beautiful. Um, kid is doing really well. You saw the improvement on the sleep questionnaire that they did, basically all zeros and ones. Um, here's another patient. You can see the initial, very deep overbite, um, an overjet. You can see the symptoms that he had. You can see it went down to zeros. Here's one uh, bedwetting slightly. Um, but you can see the progress. This child is not finished, but this is where he's heading. So you can kind of see what we see during um, the progress. Um, most of these sleep questionnaires, we might do them three, four months after the initial um, introduction um, with the appliances. Here's a third case. You can see, um, obviously, significant overbite, um, overjet. Um, you can see even the midlines are off. Here she is her finish, you can see the before and after. Um, here's a fourth case. You can see the deep overbite. Um, this is what the appliance looks like in the mouth. You can see how the teeth are coming in. They fit into the sockets and you can see what the finish is. 
Here is another case. You can see on the uppers, you can see how they're rotated, um, how there's little room for these teeth to come in, and you can see how they fit in very nicely. We use the normal eruption of teeth to help us with the expansion, as well as using the tongue as an expansion device. Um, with these appliances, the maximum we can get is 6.7 millimeters of expansion. Um, typically, we see maybe three to four, um, depending on their age, but we'll help indicate that to you when the cases are submitted. Um, we give you those, that information, we give you information when the appliances should be used, when it should be switched, those things we're looking for. Here's a six case. Um, you can see initial and finish. Um, this is an interesting girl. This, um, her mom was basically, um, ended up having to have surgery later in life because she had nothing done. And she had a very similar case as her daughter. Obviously recognizing the similarity, she wanted to get started as early as possible. So you can see the deficiency of the lower third of the face. Um, look at the deep bite. Um, the child has significant crowding going to happen. So here she is. Um, I don't know how much time has passed, but you can see significant changes. I mean, her facial appearance looks totally different. Look at her profile. Look at her arches. Um, magnificent. Now let's show you what happens once treatment is finished and what kind of retention we expect to see with these appliances. So the reason being is we're catching them at an early age and we're allowing the teeth to develop and those fiber bundles are developing into that position. So there is very little to no relapse on these cases, which is <laughs> extremely significant. As we know, orthodontic cases, we can anticipate 92% relapse. We do not see those in these cases. And that's primarily because we're treating early, we're addressing the habits, we're putting the tongue in the right position. So we're not allowing anything to compromise what the finished result is. Um, here is another case. Um, the symptoms that this child had was snoring, bruxing, bad breath, ear infections. Here it is one year later. Um, here is another case. You can see the different outward symptoms, um, fives, um, twos, um, you can see the initial, you can see approximately one year later, you can see the arch development that occurred. Um, more importantly, you can see the changes that happen in his um, outward symptoms. Here's another case, um, again, had many issues, snoring, bruxing. This is mid-treatment, here's final. That's 14 years later, and you can see there's no relapse. So I talked briefly about the app. The app's awesome. It basically allows you to have eyes on your patients. It gives the child the ability to comply. We actually get 94% com um, compliance with our appliances. We are exceptionally, I think, good at um, working with children. The app is a great tool to help us with that. So every day, um, the child wears the appliances at night. In the morning, the um, the app will ask them, did you wear it last night? Did it stay in all night? They will reward the child with a coin they can put in the bank to buy other things later on. They also give them 30 minutes of game time each day. On Fridays, we will ask them to take a selfie of them. We have cheek retractors. They'll take a photo. Um, it will create a flip book for the parent it will also process this information to your portal so that you can monitor that patient. We also ask the parent on a daily basis, have you noticed any changes in those outward symptoms? So we have a real time change of when those symptoms are changing for us. But it's a, it's a great way. Um, the Flipbook for a parent is a wonderful marketing tool. Um, what parent isn't going to brag about their child and show the changes, whether it's on the soccer field or if it's your neighbor or your niece or whatever it is. So it, it really um, facilitates a great tool for marketing, but it also helps you in the office to monitor. Um, we never want a patient not to be wearing it. Um, what if the dog ate it? What if um, they lost it? We don't want to wait till that next appointment. So if you aren't seeing that, um, 
three days in a row, I suggest making a phone call and just asking them, maybe Johnny's sick. If Johnny's sick, you know, as soon as he can breathe through his nose again, we want him to resume wearing the appliances. If Johnny lost the appliance, we need to um, reissue a new appliance for him. If the dog got it, we need to be very careful that the appliances stay in one of two places, your mouth or the box. And um, dogs love them and they will get to them if you leave them out. Here's what the app looks like to take the selfie and there are the cheek retractors for you. And um, again, we take um, safety extremely seriously. All of our appliances, we basically regulate ourselves to a class two medical device. We do not need to do that. But we want to make sure parents understand how significant their child's safety um, is going to be. So our appliances are all FDA cleared. There's no latex. Um, they um, are BPA, BPS free, phthalate free. There's no silicone. So you, you can know, um, knowing that we've treated so many kids and we've done this for so many years, um, we are very confident to say the safety of your child is our probably primary concern. Um, here are some interesting um, different marketing. Um, you know, this, this is the biggest topic that's in dentistry right now. Um, I think it's going to be here for a long time, knowing how many kids and adults are affected by sleep. Um, is going to basically change the way we do dentistry. Um, I say that a dentist is not just a dentist. He's actually an oral physician. You do have the expertise. Please be aware though that you are not allowed to diagnose sleep apnea. That is reserved for the MD or the sleep physician. However, you're able to identify the underlying root causes that affect a child when you screen them for sleep and breathing and airway issues. So it's really important to know that verbiage. And we talk about that a lot during the digital course. Um, but anyways, we had a doctor here just a couple weeks ago that um, was approached by um, ABC to do a segment on what he was doing. And the producer talked to him and said, wait a minute, this is too big. She actually drove a camera crew out for uh, I think two or three hours in his office to film this segment and it was eared and it was, you know, obviously um, crazy, a lot of calls, a lot of parents inquiring. But what I found really interesting, the producer said, this is way too big of a story. This happened in Detroit, Michigan. This needs to go to a higher level. So um, she is bringing the story to some of those other people to continue that conversation. Um, we have, um, we always want to encourage our doctors and we are working um, very hard to um, reach out to the medical profession because this is a collaboration. Realizing that we need to work with the pediatricians, the ENT, the sleep physicians, the dentists, the orthodontist, the pediatric dentist, in order to identify what is going on with these children and being able to screen them. That sleep questionnaire comes in so handy to identify some of these issues because Let's face it, are you going to be <laughs> at that child's um, room when they sleep? No, but a parent can. And many times parents don't even know what's going on when the child sleeps. So it's a really important conversation. Even if they take out their cell phone and videotape their child sleeping for five minutes, bring it in, we'll fill out the sleep questionnaire together. There's a lot of different ways that you can um, get that information. Um, we have parent webinars that we give similar to what you're on tonight, but we do it every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Time. And we um, will reach out to organizations, um, Facebook groups. We tend to have doctors that are our providers um, give parent webinars for their community. So parents understand and basically see a face to the um, office that's going to be able to provide treatment for them. So here's one. Um, typically we get a couple hundred parents um, our largest one was over 18,000 in one night. That's huge. That's, <laughs> that, that's, that's our mission. We need to educate. If we can educate our parents, they will come. They will understand and they will see the benefit of what you're offering. So I encourage um, all of you, if you haven't had an opportunity, maybe um, come to one of our um, parent webinars and see what we're talking about. It's similar to the presentation we gave today, but less technical. 
and really focusing on the outward symptoms that parents are going to look for. And we have a provider locator on our website so they know where to go to in their area. Um, I want to spend a minute, um, I think Susie will talk a little bit more about this. Um, the next step, how do, I, how do I do this? What do I do next? We have a digital um, series, which is basically a six part series that you can do from the comfort of your home. Um, we want to make this as easy as possible. We want you to start today. There's no reason to wait. This is something that's affecting so many of your patients that you see on a daily basis. So it's imperative that at least you have the education to identify these issues. Um, the six part series on Mondays, um, you will receive a two hour video that you will be able to watch. It's an educational video, it's on a certain topic. Um, Friday of that same week um, at two o'clock central time, we have a study forum. And that study forum will basically review the two hour video that you have been watching that week. It will also spend a third of the time talking about um, how to talk to a child, how to talk to a parent, how to explain this condition. And the other third is basically, how do I implement it into my practice? Um, we also have you treat two cases during this six week process that you're going to be treating for free. We want to help you, guide you, take you through that whole process so that you understand how do I identify? How do I talk to a parent? How do I basically um, provide that appliance on the first appointment? What am I looking for on each appointment? How does that diagnostic sheet look? How does that treatment plan look? Can I? put this under dental insurance, is there a chance for me to also collect under medical insurance? These are all the areas that will be addressed. We try to make it so comprehensive for you so that you have the expertise and you can go out and continue treating the children that are in your community that are affected. So um, the next one starts January 14th. So in about two weeks, um, we would love for you to join us. Um, I want to turn it over to Susie. Maybe Susie, you can, um, continue and um, give them a little bit more information about how to get involved in the digital and maybe if they want to um, come and join us for a parent webinar as well. Sure, absolutely. That sounds great. So, and, and Leslie did a fantastic job actually doing the intro for the digital course. Um, I'll give you a, a little more detail. Um, as she mentioned, I'm going to share my screen here. Here we go. So the digital course, um, as Leslie was saying, is probably one of our most popular um, education platforms that our doctors have um, experienced, I think. Um, and the reason for that is because, of course, with the digital education course, you can do it from the comfort of your home and, you know, from anywhere in the world. I mean, we actually um, work with doctors all over the world who take our digital course. As Leslie mentioned, our next course actually starts January the 14th. And also, um, you know, it includes two full cases. Um, that's something that I, I love because it's really you having the opportunity to have hands-on training while you're actually taking the course as well, which I think is fantastic. And it's, it's the whole system. It's um, from start to finish, um, including the diagnostics, all of the appliances that you'll need for that child, um, their little animal cases that you keep the appliances in. It comes with the app, um, everything that you need for those two children to walk them through um, from start to finish their, their, their treatment. You also receive a $3,000 voucher. One thing I have to mention, because I think this is so cool, is that this course actually includes not just you, but your entire staff as well. And I think that that's amazing that Healthy Start does this. I mean, that you know, we you know, the, the course cost, which you'll find is, is minimal for everything that you're receiving includes your entire staff, um, which is just fantastic because we want, you, we want you to be successful. And we understand that if your staff is involved, then you're going to be successful. And um, if everybody understands how to talk to that parent, what to look out for, how to get your office up and running um, with Healthy Start, then, then you're going to be able to help treat as many children as possible. 
$3,000 voucher towards a destination course. So you can actually come to one of our destination courses as well. Um, the interactive study groups, which are fantastic. Um, the study groups are great because we actually, we do these live every Friday. Um, if you can't get on, it's not a problem. We actually record every se session. So everything is sent to you afterwards that that way you never miss anything. But we do have um, specialists that come on board as guests for every one of our Friday sessions. So we have billing specialists, we have implementation specialists, we have all every every week it's something different. So there's continual learning going on um, throughout the whole series. So you're going to receive training on pediatric treatment of sleep disordered breathing, improper facial growth and development, development of the dentition, screenings for sleep, breathing, and airway issue, how to increase your patient flow. Um, you're going to receive 18 CE credits for the digital course and then another 16 for the live course, which is a great way to start off your year with your CEs. And this Healthy Start um, course actually complements that policy that um, Leslie was talking about at the very beginning, the ADA policy. So we, as I mentioned, we do have doctors from all over the world that actually um, join our course. And here's some of the things that some of these doctors are saying. Doctor in Australia um, sent us a message and said that the digital course was excellent. All at Healthy Start have really got their act together and offer resources others strive for but rarely achieve. Well organized, passionate, and supportive. Doctor from Canada. I want to thank you and your co colleagues for this amazing course. I've been searching for a solid system to help my patients, and this is by far the best, most organized, comprehensive course I've taken. And then a doctor in Colorado. I really enjoyed the course, and we've identified quite a few patients that will benefit from Healthy Start. My business partner's four-year-old is in the habit corrector because he's had swallowing problems, and we've already seen great improvement in his eating. We already have three more patients who are ready to get started next week. We can't wait to see their progress. The greatest thing about Dr. Wright was that she was in her third week. It's a six session, I'm sorry, six week session. She was in her third week and she already had patients lining up at her door. And the reason for that was because she started out with those two free cases. She got kids in those habit correctors immediately. Parents I mean, it, it's amazing the difference in these kids when they start breathing properly, when they, um, you know, as Leslie mentioned, the myofunctional therapy is built into that appliance. So when they're sleeping, every single time they swallow, it activates that myofunctional therapy exercise. So the benefit that they're receiving, it's amazing. The, the parents are amazed. And so they're, they start talking to other parents. Next thing you know, um, they have everybody's, it's a buzz and everybody's, these parents are lining up at the, at the door and that's really how it happens. And so um, that's kind of a, I, I love telling that story because that happens more often than you think. And then of course the American Dental Association actually took our course and they said that the course, um, the Healthy Start a Digital Education course was ingenious, which is high praise from the American Dental Association. So how do you get started? A couple different ways. Of course, you can always call us to register. Um, you can reach us at 844-KID-HEALTHY. You can actually visit our website as well and click on our lecture schedule and, and you can, um, that'll take you to the um, digital course information. You can also go to www.openairwaydentistry.com. So the course is a $3,400 investment, which I, which I told you you were going to be probably shocked at that cost due to the fact that you get a $3,000 voucher, plus you're going to receive two free cases, and it includes your entire staff. But we are going to give um, a, a webinar event um, promo. Um, if you use the promo code airway, when you visit um, open airway dentistry, you just click on register now and um, there'll be a little um, space for you to type in a promo code and you're going to type in the promo code airway and you'll receive $300 off of the course. I have on here now is the time and together we can make a difference because it truly is. I mean, you know, there are so many children that are affected and unfortunately are suffering with this issue. Um, in fact, national statistics show that over 40 million kids um, are can potentially be facing sleep-related breathing disorders. It's a lot of kids. So um, there's a lot of kids that need help. And so now is the time. And um, together we truly can make a difference. So I, I really hope that you will join us on this mission. I see that there's a, a um, chat. Let me um, pull that up really quickly. Um, so, um, Leslie, there actually is a quick question, if you don't mind. Um, do you mind popping on and answering a quick question? Of course not. So the question is, um, association between sleep disordered breathing and autism. Oh, a great question. Um, we, we do um, 
look at children with autism, um, uh, Tourette syndrome, um, Down syndrome. There are a lot of children that um, what ends up happening is whatever condition they have seems to be aspirated because of the sleep issues. So you might have a child that has severe autism behaviors or autistic behaviors that um, are difficult to manage. Um, and we find that many of these kids do have the sleep issues, same percentages as we see in other children. But what's kind of interesting is that it basically makes the autistic behavior more um, pronounced. And so we see, parents will say, I see so many of those symptoms that we were so concerned about are so diminished that I don't see them as much. Now, we can't really say that on just on a basis for every autistic child. There's such a large spectrum. You'll have a high functioning autistic child with a low functioning. Obviously, a child has to be able to wear that appliance um, in order for them to see the benefits of what the appliance and the Healthy Start can do. So absolutely, um, autism is not to rule out. We absolutely look at those children, understand that what we see is basically we're still going to be addressing the sleep issues, but how much those sleep issues impact that child is um, we'll see, we'll see what changes. But what we have seen so far are tremendous changes in those children. Um, Down syndrome is another one where we see really, uh, it, it is remarkable. Um, parents that we see of Down syndrome children are so dedicated. It amazes me day in and day out. But we find that um, Down syndrome children have very difficult time um, basically um, having control of their oral habits. You'll see them, majority of them are mouth breathers. The tongue has absolutely no muscle strength. It is all over the place, um, a lot of drooling. So these appliances, again, um, we, we manage it slightly different for a Down syndrome child. We'll ask, we want to successfully have him them wear it one hour during the day. That's the first objective. And um, sometimes it means a parent will sit, maybe watch a movie with them and hold one finger on it just to make sure it stays in the mouth. And then they'll basically, once they've accomplished one hour, then we start addressing it at night as well. So they'll start sleeping with it. So um, we, we see tremendous changes. Tourette syndrome is another one. We're actually doing a research project and we're going to be um, utilizing these appliances in the Tourette's. Um, department and um, take a look at what changes. Um, so far, the children that have been um, treated within different practices, it's, it's made a significant difference. So it's very interesting to take a look at sleep and see what sleep, breathing, airway plays in the role of development of a child in, in all spectrums. So just realize that it's going to basically unlock the barriers that um, eat the kids face day in and day out and allow them to strive and basically um, be as successful as they can. It's, that's what we want for every child and being able to provide that is a gift and it's a gift no matter what circumstances that child's in. So hopefully that answers your question kind of long-winded, but um, absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, Dr. Um, Suresh, I noticed <clears throat> that you asked another, another question as well. Um, you were asking about the course and when is the next live course. Um, we actually have a schedule at, uh, for several courses coming up in 2019. If you go on our website and click on lecture schedule, they're all listed there. I have a suggestion. Uh, my suggestion is if you're gonna if you're gonna take advantage of the course sign up for the digital course first. And the reason for that is because you're going to get those two free cases with the digital course, plus you're going to get a $3,000 voucher to attend one of our, um, one of the destination courses. So it's the best deal, I guess you could say, um, out there, but it's a fantastic way to get, um, to get you and your staff educated and kind of take that next step to get the process started. And what we'll do is once you sign up for the course, we'll actually send you a welcome package that includes all, all of your, your starter appliances, plus um, all kinds of different things to, um, 
kind of get you going in, in the process of the January 14th course. I'm sorry, Leslie, were you going to say something? I, I was. I was going to say, yes, you know, the monetary benefit of um, treating the two cases, but I, we have found that um, when we go to a course to learn something, basically we retain 50% of the information that we're presented. So by having the digital class, doing the hands-on, let's face it, dentists are they need to use their hands to learn. And so this way, they're kind of having the best of both worlds. But then having the ability to go to a live course, and we do reserve a portion of the second day to have live patients come in and listen to the expertise of different um, providers that are there at the lecture, um, gives you the ability. Uh, I've had doctors say, I don't know, I was brain dead during the first part. I I gained so much more knowledge coming to the live class, just things I must have missed um, at the digital. It's just a lot of information and it's overwhelming. So I, I as I said, start today, get started, um, go through the digital. The great thing about the digital is that we have now put in the study forum at the end of the week as well. So it's kind of reinforcing what was um, presented on those videos. So we keep reinforcing that information. And um, let's face it, it's an ever-changing um, topic. Um, the research is coming out so fast and furious that um, even the things we presented last year, so much more information. Um, we're continuously changing that course to give you the most updated information so that you are the experts. I, we want you to be the experts in this field. And we want to make you um, the individual or the dental or oral physician that's going to change that community for you. And in order to do that, you need to be as um, current in the information as possible. And um, our portal is continuously updating the research that's coming out. Um, the um, quarterly magazines that we send out will continuously talk about that and talk about what you should be seeing and um, different cases that have been treated and um, more significant. So it is a continuous learning process. And I always say, um, the doctors, it's important to learn this, but it's really important for your staff as well. And this gives the staff that opportunity. And I know CE credits are always a concern. So, you know, there is CE credits given for the digital, but then there's also CE credits for the live. So you are able to um, continue, continue your education um, through this process and be able to gain the benefits. Um, the other thing, um, we, we want to make it a complete process for you. So when you sign up, you do get the two free classes, but what you also get is the ability to um, have sample appliances there for patients to see. Um, you'll be provided all that to put in your office. Um, we, we try to give you as many tools to make you successful and make the process as seamless as possible. So again, I can't say enough. It's just um, really critical. This is such important information. So if you're able, um, obviously you're on tonight, please, please join us. Um, we'd love to have you. Um, it's starting in two weeks. What a way to start the new year with um, this new objective for your practice. And, um, you know, hopefully I always say it's a win-win. It's definitely a win for your community. It's definitely a win for your patients. And you know what? You're going to build your practice as well. And, you know, hopefully um, be profitable in what you do. There's nothing wrong being profitable. We all have to stay in business, but we're doing so much good that it, it just seems like a win-win all the way around. Yeah, thank you so much, Leslie. Um, Dr. Sricia asks, is, does medical, come, medical billing come as part of the course support? Absolutely, yes. Yes, and medical billing is a little bit tricky. Um, we, we basically have numerous um, groups involved in kind of, um, what do you say, cracking the nut or um, moving toward um, a more systematic way of filing for medical insurance. But I will say, um, I, I don't think insurance even knows how to handle the pediatric. So there are different avenues that we pursue. Um, we have definitely been doing this for um, a couple of years. So um, not to say we're experts, but we definitely um, feel that we have um, some really good information in order to make that process um, a little bit more manageable and understandable and um, 
hopefully successful as well. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, Leslie, thank you so much for your time tonight. Um, and thank you, doctor, so much for joining us this evening. Um, I know that there was a lot of information that you guys received and um, I'm, I am I'm guarantee you that you will not, when you're out there looking at the children in your, in your practice, you're looking at the children that you're walking by you, you will notice things that you have never noticed before. Uh, that, that always happens. Um, and and I, a lot of times it even starts with, with your own children. Um, you know, we always think, oh my gosh, you know, that I, I know I did. I, I, that, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that, yes, that, that was my daughter. Um, anyway, now, now is the time. I, I, I truly hope that um, you guys reach out um, if you, you can email me directly at slafredo at thehealthystart.com and I'd be happy to pass any questions uh, on to Leslie if you have any additional questions or answer any questions that you might have about the course or how to get started. Um, thank you again so much for your time tonight and Leslie, thank you again. Thank you. And I, I saw that you put up um, the um, link for the Eli video. Yes. So okay. please, if you haven't seen it, please go look at that. Um, I, again, I apologize. It, First time. I'm not sure why, but I will investigate why it didn't play. But um, anyways, good night. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, please um, take a look at those kids tomorrow. First thing, um, start screening for sleep, breathing, and airway. And um, please let Healthy Start be a part of it. And we'd be love to partner up with you and um, work on basically um, helping these kids and letting them live a happier and healthier life. So Thanks. happy New Year's, everyone. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.